Welcome to the Ikile Nightclub. Uh, thank you so much for joining me here. Uh, hey, what are you guys doing awake? You should be asleep. Should be, uh, you know, school or should be work time in the morning, right? I know myself, I've got to get up approximately 4.45, 5 o'clock, you know. <laughs> but it's, sometimes it's really important to have these chats. So good to see you. Uh, really great to see that some of you guys already sort of in there. Wally, great to see you in there, mate. Good on you. Really great to see you. And also, can I say that for for those of you who I've met for the first time physically at the Forum on the Family, just so great to see you there. Great to clasp hands, have a bit of a hug and all that sort of good stuff. Ah, oh, no, sick ears. Yeah, so it was really, really good. So, uh, yeah. Wally, oh, oi, oi, thank you. <laughs> so this is a this is a very late night night camp, very much a light one because I've had a few meetings and been doing a couple, we had one online meeting and a couple of physical meetings. So I've sort of come back from those, which is why I'm sort of, in, in the uh, jacket sort of stuff there uh, but uh, really really important to maybe have a have a quick catch up on some things that have been going on I, I just couldn't believe what I was reading on some some angles uh, in him evening family very good great to see you there we got mihi kia ora kia ora kia ora kia ora all right so you got we got some wonderful guys there so as you know as some of you know there was a Twitter profile known as Thomas Thomas Craner, which I which I believe is not the real person or person's real name, and that that entity managed to uncover a great deal of nepotism, I would argue, corruption through the foreign minister Nanai Mahuta and her family in Ufano, in terms of what they were bringing up. Now we know about the that devastating 
that divisive document known as her pulpo. We know all of you know we know these things, and we'll be discussing those as it comes closer to the election. But I fear as we went on and as the OIAs, which is the Official Information Act requests, as the government was forced to give more and more documents over, it became very clear that the Mahuta family had becoming was amassing wealth and power immensely and it was quite crazy what was going on as some of you may know of course that we were the very first media outlet to actually engage in this we had we were not the first it was that political that uh, that twitter handle that was able to get in there and, and look for things first but we were the very first media to actually engage with it and we, we are we're really proud of that victoria bryan actually did a wonderful job in terms of being able to go through this look at this this is all in the mahuta family part seven this one here is part seven if you go onto our website you'll be able to find all the parts that we actually engaged in all right there is some excellent graphics there that very clearly show how the the family were really engaging in a collection of power and a collection of finances it was absolutely incredible to the point where now some people have said that there's actually not much you can do to stop that family that is turning into a a dynasty that's akin to or or i suppose the similar type of the clinton foundation or the clinton family where they have push into the politics and power level so high so i think that's something which we really really need to have a look at and have a real discussion on uh, we've got some more people there uh, Marlo, oh, Marlo, Marlo. very good very good to see you guys there sick years well done again you guys should be asleep you should be asleep for work for school for study all of that sort of good stuff uh, Wally they would still seem to be hanging on to that power and finance you're absolutely right and what's fascinating as well is it seems to be outside the realms of the outside the realms of party Nanai Mahuta, strongly labor, hard labor, but also outside of that, she's been amassing a great deal of power with her, with her husband. Yes, I know she, the first cousins, all of that sort of stuff, but uh, along with the husband and also some of the relatives that I believe the nephew and things like that. Well, so we had a situation where we, where we've since been able to see not us, but this again is that really strong Twitter handle. All right, and that's by the name of, or that's by the handle Thomas Kramer. So have a look at this. This is something which has just 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 been released. All right, this is jaw dropping. Mahuta's husband received twenty eight thousand three hundred of funding from TPK's Rarangatahi Suicide Prevention Fund of fifteen thousand five hundred. All right, now this here, I'm going to show you a couple of things here. This here is the the form that was given out and it should never have been redacted as in those black solid amounts they should never be redacted there's no real reason for them to be redacted it, absolutely not there's it's not like it's a national security issue or something like that it really isn't so these are redacted okay well, okay all right so that's redacted who cares well let's have a look at what what the issue is and this is where it gets to be real cloak and dagger stuff all right, I want to put in here. Okay, so remember, that's the redacted form that you're looking at there. Now, let's have a look at the unredacted form. So what's redacted? All right, in the form of Tyro Grant, that element there, and also this area here, proposed a list of experts who will be paid taxpayer money and proposed list of panelists, and that will be paid uh, taxpayer-funded money. And they redacted also... The amount of dis the amount of taxpayer funds or funds being given to these quote unquote experts here and here. Now remember, this is an official government document that's putting in tenders. That's that's looking at, at giving experts who are out there in the community taxpayer money in order to discuss a project. And in this terms, it's rangatahi suicide prevention. Seems seems nice and, and great on the whole. Okay, now let's have a look. Let's have a look at what's going on this one. This is the unredacted. This is the unredacted version. And there we go. Have a look at these experts. All right. Now this is what was hidden here. Approximately five thousand dollars available. Again, this doesn't seem like a lot of. Uh, uh, does not seem like a lot of money. 
but this gets very high once you start adding these all up. All right, participants and experts, and these are the experts here. Proposed list of experts. All right. Amy Fetu, uh, Taim, uh, Tame, Malcolm, Roy Mata Clark, Dina Tapara, and Kahurangi Taylor. All right. And then the panelists. Proposed list of panelists. And look who's number one there. Nanai Mahuta, Waikato, Governance, International Relations. All right. And then you've got uh, Taina and Jackie Forbes. All right. Have a look at this down here. All right, you've got your experts that are being paid $3,000 per day. These are taxpayer funds. All right, $1,500 from Waikato Tainui funding and $7,500 from the TPK funding. All right, and underneath that, of course, you've got your $2,000 per person by four. And there's no Waikato Tainui funding. It's all TPK funding. And just to remind you as to what the TPK is, all right, I want to put that in there as well. Just to give you a reminder as to who that is, who is a TPK who is funding the majority of this? Well, there you go. The TPK is the government's principal policy advisor on Māori wellbeing and development. What that means is that it is the taxpayer-funded government department. So yet again, you've got you got double dipping. I think in this case, this is triple dipping. All right, the, you, you, you've got to really, this is an extraordinary, again, again, another extraordinary amount where you've got a government minister who is married into the ones who are attending the process and she's also part of the panellist who's also getting paid taxpayer funds while she is being taxpayer funded. The, the absolute horrific mess that is, that's not just a conflict of interest, really isn't. You're talking about someone who's already getting paid and funded by the taxpayer funded to be a, a, the, the politician and, and to be in terms of governance. And then you've got her family member who's applying into her government department area, who's been funded by that department area. And then she's also a part of that department funded area to get taxpayer funded through that department. It's a spaghetti, it's a spaghetti junction. That's what it is. It's a spaghetti junction of multiple streams of revenue, all being funded by the taxpayer, all going through to one family. How does that, how does that get through? How does it get away from the mainstream media of New Zealand? How does it get away from the opposition parties? How does it get away from, from their own morality their own code of behavior let alone their code of conduct it's extraordinary absolutely extraordinary the amount of i can't even call it nepotism in my view it is not just nepotism it is institutionalized corruption i can't i can't see it any other way i'm i'm shocked uh, mihi i i feel you OMG, I'm so embarrassed to be Māori right now. I feel, I feel you, I'm just... My tikanga was learned in Waikato. I am not tai, I am not Tainui as in Te Iwi. I am a Te Ateawa Ngāti Raukawa person. But I was taught my tikanga in the Tainui way, in the Waikato way. And I, I am, I, I just, I'm shocked that this is going on. Are you feeling how, how convoluted... These strands, these multiple strands of corruption are. It's 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 shocking, absolutely shocking. You know, you, you really can't it's hard to grasp onto how incredibly shocking this is. I, you know, I know I keep saying the word, but but really the more I think about it, I, I just don't understand it. How does this get through all of the the control areas and powers that be? It's not meant to be that way. Look at that. Proposed list of panellists. Redacted in the previous form. Had to be found to be unredacted version. And it's Nai Nai Mahuta coming up first in there. And also, Te Pune Kōkiri funding will provide koha for panellists and experts to support participants to develop their, their ideas. This includes travel, accommodation, and koha. Koha, by the way, and look, I'm, I am guilty. Don't think I'm innocent. 
I'm guilty. When I was working for a couple of government departments, we used koha. And we used koha because you knew you knew no one was going to really talk about it at all. No one was going to say anything against it. You could just sign off on a, on a koha check, just go to and everyone shuts their mouth and doesn't say anything. I am not guiltless in this. I am part of, I was part of that problem too, years ago. Uh, utterly shocking, really. You know, so, you know, that's there. And, and look, this goes on, right? It goes on. Let's have a look here. And this is what's really, really powerful here. Simeon Brown, uh, to the Minister of Māori Development. Were any conflicts of interest identified as part of Te Puni Kōkiri's agreement dated 21 April 2021 Rangatahi Suicide Prevention Fund Investment Agreement for Kawatia Services Limited? And if so, what were they and how were they addressed? So, were there any conflicts of interest? This is the, from the document that we've just had a look at. Was there any conflict of interest in there? Clearly, yes, there was. The Willie Jackson, now this is Willie Jackson, the fellow who wants to talk big and all, talk smack in terms of, oh, you know, I'm all for the Māori, whatever, bro. All right, because he actually turned around and stabbed charter schools straight in the back. And he, that was actually doing well for Pacific and Māori people. Anyway, Willie Jackson replied, I have been advised that there have been no conflicts of interest identified as part of Te Puni Kōkiri's agreement, yada, 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 yada. I have been advised that there have been no conflicts of interest. That's what he said. Right? The absolute nonsense, of course. That's absolutely wrong. All right? Utterly wrong. Uh, we know that. And in actual fact, let's have a look at this. Now, this was a part here. And this was brought up. Were there topics, or in, in terms of this, in terms of the tender that was looked at, the topic here in, under step 5.2, were there conflicts of interest? Details? Yes. Yes. Nanai Mahuta is the wife of Ka Awatia Director Gannon Ormsby and auntie of Ka Awatia Directors and Tuatawa Taua Taiawa uh, Creators Tamoko and Waimiririrangi Ormsby. Ah, and I recognise also that uh, Waimiririrangi Ormsby. I recognise that name. That name is one of the authors of the Hair Pua Pua document. Come on. I mean, look, I, I, you know, I have to. Come on, you know, there has to be a time. There has to be a time where, where some of them sit back and go. <laughs> you know, <laughs> this is corruption. There, there's got to be a time that that some of them have to sit back and go. You know, that's a that's clear corruption that you know, you gotta understand, you know, yes, my compatriots Liao and Fuyavai and Mal, you know, and these guys, these are my teammates on our crew and they will bring up things off quickly. For example, the, the sound the sound cannons at the freedom protests and I said, Ah, I don't know. You know, and they were saying, No man, I'm telling you they were there. They were there and they were affecting us. And, I, was there. and I, I kept on going, nah, 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 nah. You know, or no, I didn't say no. I said, I said unlikely. It's, I think it's it's unlikely. I'd have to see more proof. And then of course it came out that they were using actual sound cannons, which arguably could break the Geneva Convention. It could it could be literally a war crime. Not only that, and there was a sleep deprivation. I want Trevor Mallard, and I, I don't. So I don't usually. I don't like going to those rabbit warrens and those things but but come on you know you've got to see this for what it is multiple strands of of layered conflict of interest over conflict of interest just funneling taxpayer f money left right and center utilization of that uh, or, or abuse of that word koha in order to cover travel and and beautiful hotels and and exquisite places to chomp chomp food on and, and things like that i just i just you know i don't want to say that we're in a in a banana republic or anything like that but uh, but this is this is the biggest news yet because this uh, again we you know we i mean i'm really proud of of our team that we were the very first media to actually do this and then of course it was the platform after that and then i 
thing, then then I think maybe VFF, VFF or maybe a couple of others got involved then. And then we had, I believe it was, RNZ after some of the politicians grabbed a hold of the stories and then started to really challenge what's going on in Parliament. But this here is, is a culmination of all of the all of those strands of funding being collected together that has amassed power and money under one family while the rest of us were all in dread and fearful and and you know we were also calling out Miss Ardern for the shocking events that they were doing you know and, and in the meantime this was going on and I can't help but think that we we are those levers and checks of balance and power that are supposed to exist supposed to allegedly exist it's an incredible betrayal of the spirit of democracy it's an incredible betrayal of of our people i've spoken to many ngapuhi just this afternoon alone let alone what i've been talking to over the last years or so and what i've been who i've been dealing with and what i've been dealing with but they're really clear that that all of these settlements and all of these massive amounts these the racist structures that we now see being implemented they are not reaching the people on the ground they are not getting to where they need to those healthcare units they're not getting to the 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 the, the schooling system you know oh no nah, but we've got kura kopapa well, you might want to have a bit of a stronger look there, if you really want to. You know, we, we've got movie makers now making heaps of money, mostly off the taxpayer themselves. Us, you, your families. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's, it's not getting to the people that really need it anyway, which we always knew it would not. It is instead creating this elite class. We already know that the academics have already garnered quite a lot of power. When you look at Hippur Poor document, great example, the authors of that are academics and taxpayer funded academics. All right, they are making huge money off our people, of us, and they have they have the elite academics and the politicians have managed to set Maori against Pakeha, Pakeha against Pacifica. And in just an absolute race relations are at the worst. I think that they're at the worst time than ever. You know, I, I think that we've got shocking racism going on. And that's from everywhere, from every quarter. You know, uh, yes, we heard. What, what did we hear? We heard that there was racism against Fessel Collins on his billboards. I can tell you right now that almost definitely that would be done by Māori. I know that because many of them, or not many, but some have told me that they can't stand Pacifica. Don't don't get twisted on this whole, if you brown, then you the same. What the government has done, what media have done, and what the academics have done to race relations in this country are despicable. It is detestable how they have pitted New Zealanders. They've cut us down the middle. They've cut us all over the places and set us at each other's throats. And that's why I loved the, the convoy. That's why I loved covering the convoy. I'll be honest, you know, I had some teary moments. I didn't cry like a little, you know, I didn't cry like a girl. But I did. I had some teary moments. Because when I was at the convoy, it was very difficult to see everyone the same. Because there was Maori, Pacifica, there was Malaysian, there was Indian, there was Fijian Indian, there were Safas. There were all different peoples of all walks of life. There was, you know what, one of my most powerful and daring mo moments for me was seeing the, the, the Tino Rangatira flag and the New Zealand flag flying together. That that got me. Because as you as you know, I believe in an equal and, and one code for all New Zealand. I believe in that. So I don't believe in separatism. And I don't believe in the, the ideas of tino ranga tanga, meaning that we should go back to Section 70 days of the Constitution Act. We, I don't think we should. But I, I, I was so proud to stand when I was in some of those marches alongside people who were flying that flag. And we had great chats and we had great discussions. Why? Because we were united. It was beautiful. Uh, Wally, absolutely right, Wally. It was. It was utterly beautiful. It really, really was. Uh, Julie, 
I agree. I'm 56 and never seen racism like it. You're absolutely right, Julie. You know, it's, it's utterly shocking. Uh, Lynn, Ellie, we need to get your replay. Oh! <laughs> yes, yes, awesome if you do. All right, uh, yes, and, and by the way, if you, if you can, I did see that one of the crew actually popped up there. If you can uh, jump onto YouTube and just subscribe to that YouTube, that would actually help us out a lot. There's some plans that we have in place for that one, so it's, it's really, really well done. Yep uh paulio 100 percent correct man marxism 101 set the people against each other and while you're st still there steal their money and democracy and that's that's exactly what we've seen you know uh, it, uh that's a hey, but but you have to understand i mean i don't think that there's <laughs> look i'm doing this again but i don't think that there's a, a deep dark room where you've got the politicians the academics and the media sitting in a circle or planning out what they're going to do but it, it really feels like it you know, it's either that or they, or that they align so much with with progressivism and wokeism, that they align so much that they just meld together very nicely. You know, because you, if you look at it, that that academic government politicians and the media just really tr uh, formed up real nicely. And I want you to note, I'm not talk. I didn't say Labour. I didn't say Greens. I said the government politicians. I think that, I think that the uh, the quote unquote opposition has been shockingly bad i'm i'm really this is not the way parliament's not supposed to work this is not the way democracy is supposed to work you're supposed to have a passionate fight in parliament and you, you're supposed to be able to to go to war with words in terms of what's going on and really national seem to fight against labor on some economic policies not all uh, but when it, as soon as it comes to some of the other things they just they shut up shop and, and they're just along with it Hence, why, for example, the the parliament, the the uh, freedom protest, the freedom village that we had, that uh, you know in the early part of this year, was will be looked upon in, in years to come, uh, but to have no politicians at all come out, no representative of the country come out to a group where over thirty percent of New Zealanders, according to mainstream media polls, were actually supporting, and you you had none, none. You didn't even have David Seymour. Don't don't. I wouldn't even bring up David Seymour because don't forget he didn't come out until the polls showed him having a dip, and he's very well known to be Winston Peters for libertarians. He is the Winston Peters of libertarians. He'll sniff out, oh, the people want this. All right, sweet, I'm going it. You know, so uh, that that's what happened in that in that regard. Uh, let's have a look, Clara. Under this present day government, you can't tell them apart. There isn't much of an opposition party. Yes. Yeah, I agree. And, and again, let's just say a couple of them are meeting more and more with different groups who want different things. Uh, and and I, I don't know. I think I think I do tend to I do tend to think that the way that middle New Zealand work, they're so busy growing up and, and then, you know, working all day, coming home, hugging kids, having food, that they don't have the opportunity to be able to get good quality data as to what's going on so they have to rely on news hub and tv1 and uh, rnz and, and all of those guys so so they don't get very good quality data they get a very strongly biased and slanted view on things so so i wonder i don't know if if smaller groups are going to work i think maybe you do need to have an umbrella party or something like that under that um, i i suppose I don't know. What do you guys think? I I think that I, I like Matt King. I'll be honest. I like Democracy NZ. I think they're they're pretty cool. Mm, I haven't I I haven't made any decision. I haven't I haven't I keep on bonking left and right on on different things. So I just don't know. Uh, I think MMP is a problem, of course. I think that that is also what weakens us. It's just really really shocking what's going on. Uh, but I do, I want, I'll just, let's have a look at this again, all right, let's have a little giz gas there, all right, I see, I'm gonna make it big, big for us, all right, all right, this, uh, Thomas Kramer, this was funding which had criteria that required it to be used with a suicide prevention focus for 10 to 24 year olds, and I'm sorry, I don't think they know what they're doing when it comes to suicide prevention, all right, I, I know damn well, and I know some of you out there have had some vicious experiences with this this horrific thing, uh, but these guys don't really. 
these guys don't really get it. They really don't. TPK has confirmed that uh, Ka Awatea had no suicide expertise. <laughs> they confirmed that Ka Awatea had no suicide expertise. None. And instead used the funding for a three-day off-site for 18 to 13 five-year-olds with a business incubator panel. Okay, sorry, I'm getting very angry. Maybe it's just late at night, but I'm getting very angry at that. TPK has confirmed that Ka Awatea had no suicide expertise and that they instead used the funding for a three-day off-site for 18 to 35-year-olds with a business incubator panel. That is, that's filthy. That is absolutely disgusting. So, so they went for thousands upon thousands upon thousands of taxpayer dollars to fund, not alone that, also koha to be able to give them yummy food, beautiful hotels and fun times, and, and cash in the pocket. And they were putting it under a suicide prevention for rangatahi. And they don't have any type of experience in it. They've got no idea what they're doing. Right, it goes on. All right, look at that. Simeon, Simeon Brown again. You know, a good guy. I, I tell you, I've he's a he's a guy of integrity. I like him. What are the ministry's definitions of a conflict of interest? Here, yeah. Willie Jackson. Your questions about definitions of conflict of interest and severe conflicts of interest relating to yada 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 relate to operational processes which are best directed for the Secretary of Māori Development, Te Puni Kōkiri. Right, passing the buck. And that's what they're doing. You know, this is what they're doing. All right. Now, I, I think we need to. We, we probably need to put this into uh, a, a bit of an article because this is just this is absolutely shocking. Yes, I, I see some of you guys talking about the platform. This is probably what they're going for. Um, you know, and uh, good on them. Good on them. It's really great that they're joining in to to spread that news to bring up that awareness factor i love it i think that that's what we need to have you know i just you know i work with alongside uh, a lot of people who've been working and that idea about people working paycheck to paycheck is is on point a lot of people out there are struggling and and when you think about people who own houses barely making it some of them are just crying many days and i know that because they release that to me and they're scared and they want to hold on to their home and their kids but when they've got rates and taxes which are being paid out every week that are getting higher and higher and then on top of it, they're told that because they're not the right color brown, that they're not going to be, get the best of medical attention, that somehow they're to blame for for the problems of other people. And at the same time, they're really struggling. It's just utterly wrong. Mm, I will say this. I've got some in my circle and my circle circle who work in the financial services sector. And, and they've said on the sly that they, they're they shocked at the amount of money that, for example, people on benefits get. And and we shouldn't hit benefits. But what you're looking at is, is a government who is addicting our people to benefit dependency. And when you're addicted to benefit dependency, it's so hard to get off it. You lose motivation and resilience, tenacity. You find that it's better to break up with your partner because, hey, you don't need a man because the government becomes daddy. Uh, the, and it just, the kids from them become worse and worse. It's just utterly shocking. I just, I, I, I do, I just, I can't, I, you know, I did, I came out of the meetings, stuff like that. I've, I was looking into this topic because I like to go straight to the source. I don't I generally don't listen to, I'll be honest, I don't listen to other media. Yep, that in, that does include uh oh, I, I sort of like the platform. You know, I, I like some of it. Some of it is just again uh, a little bit woke or a little bit too liberal for me. 
um, and that that's fine. That's because that's libertarians, you know, it's, and that's all good. Jonathan, was the koha an option? As I saw that that's given in emails to have a fee or koha. So those on an above middle class income pay, but those in grassroots lower paid salary can attend. As you've said, it's those at the coalface that have a clearer idea of what is needed on on so many topics. Yeah, hey, that's fair. Yeah, no, that's fair, Jonathan. Yep, yep, straight up. That's uh, actually a really good comment to make. Now, the koha that, that has been seen in Thomas Kramer's one is actually one that's been given to elites and to academics. So that, that koha has been given to absolutely the wrong one. They're getting taxpayer funded already. They're going to get taxpayer funded expenses paid and they're going to get taxpayer fund uh, koha on top of that. And again, don't forget that this is on top of also being given to people who are at the top of that particular government t- department that's paying out those monies to them both sides now or, or triple sides. Uh, now, when I did the koha for my areas, I did use koha and I knew I knew I could use it you know, way back when because I knew that no one would say anything. That I could just put in whatever I want and everyone has to shut up because as soon as you say koha, it's, it's there. You just have to write koha on your uh, purchase order and, and put whatever number on there. Now, I'd like to think that when I did it, uh, it was for uh, for marae and for certain uh, gomato in there who I knew, who I felt anyway, sort of needed it. So I was giving them a job to do in the uh, work that I was doing in there. And, and so I was happy to give that to them. That's what I sort of liked. But I can't, but I'm sure a couple of times I gave koha would be to ones who were already getting fat checks from other areas. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but uh, Jonathan, absolutely, yeah, fair point, man. Uh, you're right, koha can be given, it, again, it depends on that. Uh, I don't even think intention, but it's got to be done accurately, and then it could be done okay. And this is the thing, hey, you know, they abuse it. They've abused, they have abused the the Maori world you know, that history, the beautiful customs, they've ruined it, they've abused the custom of it. Koha should be there, and it should be a fine part of it, but they've abused it. The the ideas of Te Tiriti o Waitangi, the treaty, it's a beautiful document. It is a beautiful document. The story around it's beautiful. But once the academics grabbed a hold of it in the 80s, started redefining words, and started to do whatever they wanted with it, that's when it turned into a, a, a shocking mess. And now, of course, see, I love, I love that word Aotearoa. I love it. I love the way it sounds. I love what it means. I like where it came from. I love every element of that word and that term Aotearoa. I love it. But I hate, hate what the academics and the politicians and the media have done by twisting it and turning it and turning it into some some word of conformity that you must speak this word and we're going to sneak it into every which way that we say it and we're going to aim it at your kids too just for good measure you know i i think i've said this before i love the name aotearoa as much as i hate what the academics politicians and media have done to it you know so it's absolutely shocking uh, pay you're right, Elliot, about dependency on benefit, and it's even worse when things are done strategically to keep you there. I absolutely hate it. However, our time is coming to break out from the stronghold. Yep, absolutely right. I, I do. I believe that. I can tell you that there was a event very recently. I'm not going to say too much about it because it's in the heart of the red domain, and Pacifica are notoriously uh, aligned with it. But there was an event. It was a Pacifica church, and at that Pacifica church, it was a full church, and they were speaking directly against that heavily, that anti-Christian, anti-Pacifica, anti-New Zealand policies that have been coming out from the government. And the fact is that people were there and some of them were crying and it was a powerful, powerful time. It really was. And this is the way, for and I'm, I'm, just in terms of this group, Pacifica work. The Pacifica generally are like the abused girlfriend. They're the abused one. And they will keep crawling back to labor like the abused one. But that, that not showed that there is a... There is a turn, a shift coming. You know, that, that even they who are so loyal, loyal to like boxer in Animal Farm, loyal to a fault, that in actual fact they are starting to realize it too and they're coming out. All right. Hens, 
I love our national anthem. Absolutely right. So look, yeah, I went. Look, it's a late night. All right, so we got. We're gonna go to bed. Jeez, I'm gonna go to bed far out. And so, so yeah, I just wanted to bring that out. And and look, just another little. Hey, this is a little bit of a another big big one that's gonna come up as well. And and look, we we'll make sure that we get this out there for you as well. This came up from uh, Doctor Sharma. This came back two hours ago, a couple of hours ago. All right, and he's actually spilled the beans. On, you know. He's he is now talking uh, about what happened in Northland. All right, I'm gonna pull this up a little bit here. Ooh, 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 ooh. There we go. He's talking about what happened to three women who were given permits by the government. All right, this is a, this is another extraordinary one. All right, irresponsible, dangerous, extraordinary, fascinating. All right, uh, they were given the permit legally. It had nothing to do with gangs. They were not prostitutes. All right, uh, now, have a look at what one of the women says. Although I am glad the truth has come full circle, my main concern is the accountability and integrity of our government and the lies in which the public clearly believed. If not direct lies, then the comments made to give the public the impression and idea of who we are. I truly hope that the lesson learned here is a lesson for the government, people of New Zealand, not stand will not stand for misleading false information uh, and, uh, and antics carried out by those of whom we choose to lead our country. She said the claims fabricated about her and her friends were absolutely galling and disgusting. All right, so, so this is, you know, and, and he also brings up, don't forget, just in Ardern, she th totally threw the KFC worker under the bus you know, and she said casual plus contact. She's, she was very disrespectful, at, really disrespectful to the KFC worker. How dare you, you know? Yep, the Prime Minister loves to pretend like she wants to smile, hug people and all that sort of stuff. But you put her you put her in place and she's, underneath that, there is a ruthlessness can, that can only be learned from Helen Clark, really. Uh, and then, of course, the Kmart worker, uh, as of course, the, the security guard as well. Oh, and yes, and look, he even brings up the news, the case of New Zealand reporter Charlotte Bellis. You know, Chris Hipkins released personal personal information without her consent when he believed she had arrived in Afghanistan. False information, and uh, he, he absolutely falsely did that. You know, the government is this is a most unkind, deceptive, brutal government. We've never had a government like this ever. You know, never. We've never had a government like this since 1852 Constitution Act Amendment days. Never. This is the worst government we've ever had. I've said that from day one. I said that in 20... Was it 17? No. No, I said that in about 2018, I think. 18, 19, I started saying it from there. But this is the worst government we've ever had in the history of New Zealand. Most brutal, most cruel. And throughout they're garnering for themselves power and money you know uh joanne those these poor women were vilified in the media no apology from the government no accountability don't forget as well you know trevor mallard you know disgusting that he uh, that he actually accused someone without proof of uh, being a rapist and then refused to really apologize too much and what happened we, you and i paid for him you and i paid out you know uh, Jonathan Byers coming with the question do you support UBI that's not enough to be a living but also enough to seek what excites you or gives one day less or two to be with family in, in times of growth or teaching I like the idea just not just not seeing it talked of in political talks uh, Jonathan no I, I absolutely hate uh, the idea of UBI sorry I love it if I was in a bit of a fairyland buzz you know we all want free money absolutely that'd be great yum yeah, but in reality, it's just not a good idea. So maybe, maybe you should say it that way. You know, we all want UBI, but but it's it's actually not healthy for us. It's I guess it's like the equivalent of saying, "Nah, nah, don't drink water, just drink Coca Cola." So I guess something like that. You know, the it, it sounds really yummy and nice, and, and you know, free money is free money, but of course, it's not free. And in fact, there is no place on earth, nowhere has any one of those pilot programs ever come out with a successful benefit not at all none 
Uh, the ones that they thought they did, they had to cut it off after a while because obviously they started to see as it, the longer it goes on, the worse it gets. You always get these uh, within like the, the first couple of months, oh, mm, beautiful, you know, people happier and more freer and all that sort of stuff. And then it just <laughs> cracks down like that. All right, so no, the UBIs just don't work. And, and it takes away, again, again, it removes that element of humanity. We, we must work hard. We must suffer to gain results. We've got to get in there and be tenacious and get grit and to take the losses and hits. We've got to become stronger and more resourceful. That's, and that's how we do it. That's how we get ahead. You, you can't cheap shot it. You can't get muscles. You can't get muscles just by getting liposuction and then putting muscle implants. It just doesn't work that way. Hey, it'd be nice, but mm. <laughs> all right. Look, hey, thank you so much, guys. I, I want to say thank you for for joining me tonight. Really great that you did. Uh, and, and look, yeah, I'm sure that this news will come out on different media channels. I I just really wanted to share with you what was on my heart. And uh, yeah, thank you for coming on in. And in the meantime, as always, God bless you. God bless you, Zealand.